I wish these moments could last forever. We've all had that thought before. When we're surrounded by people we love. When the challenges of the world seem a thousand miles away. When everything just feels right. We feel at home, filled with fun. It feels like the world is a dream. That's what this anime is about. Little Busters is a visual novel adaptation from the visual novel studio Keem, most notably known for Clannad and a number of others. And if you've seen Clannad, the feel and tone of the show won't surprise you. At its core, Little Busters is a slice of life about a group of childhood friends in their high school lives and some new friends they meet along the way. It loosely centers around a baseball team they start, but this isn't a sports anime, don't worry. There are also a few more dramatic moments thrown in and some supernatural mysteries as well, but the show feels really grounded in its slice of life, and I like this structure. For one, having the slice of life as the center point just grounds the show and establishes a sense of normalcy to build the rest on top of. Sometimes more dramatic shows can feel like they're just too much. They keep building the story bigger and bigger, but there's no foundation of what is normal. With the Little Busters, though, that foundation of the characters' lives are there, and then it can add the more serious stories on top of that while still having that solid foundation. It can also weave a story arc all throughout the show without it ever being a big focus, just there, slowly moving it forward one step at a time. And I also like how the sports aspect is only part of the show, and never the most important part. A number of the episodes do involve the baseball team in some way, like them playing or practicing or whatever, but the show is never about that, instead showing it as only one of many parts of these characters' lives. And the daily lives of the characters are all really fun. The comedy is hilarious, and while they do sometimes reuse jokes, they're funny enough it doesn't matter. I have so many funny screenshots, which I am probably showing you now, that just show how absurd and comical and weird and fun it is. I'm saying fun a lot because, well, the show is fun! Fun things are fun. You can't argue with that one. I've been watching a lot of older anime recently, including a number of slice of luck comedies I've looked forward to, but most of them get dull after a couple episodes. But Lil Buster stays consistent with the enjoyable times, at least when it wants to. This makes it one of my favorite slice of life anime, and I really like all the characters, and their friendship can really be felt here. That is the heart of the show, the characters, their friendship, how much they cherish each other. And I also liked how there wasn't a focus on romance here, since the show didn't need that. It would have been easy for them to tease romantic possibilities between the main guy and all the girls that he meets, but they didn't need to do that, and I appreciated that they didn't. It let the show instead focus on what did matter. But while this is mostly a slice of life comedy, there's definitely more to it than that, and a number of serious parts as well. Throughout the show, there are a number of characters the childhood friends meet, and most of these characters have a couple episodes that really get into who they are and the challenges that they faced in life, leading to some powerful moments. But while some of these arcs are pretty good, others really fell flat. Kudz, specifically, really just wasn't good. There's so many logical inconsistencies with it, or moments that just weren't explained so it made no sense and it was just robbed of all the power it could have had. There's also an element of supernatural in this arc that just felt like a plot device. The way Little Busters handles the supernatural is that it's there in the background but doesn't have a big impact on the world most of the time. This is fine and lets the show be grounded and feel realistic while still allowing for some touches the fantastical. But when a fantastical element just shows up and solves a problem without any previous explanation, it just feels contrived and hurts the show. Still, very enjoyable show. It's fun characters doing fun things, all centered around cherishing friendship. These together just make it a really great and fun show. But then there's Little Buster's Refrain, the second season to the show. And this is where everything is flipped upside down. Refrain is the big climax. It's only 13 episodes, unlike the 26 of the first episode, which I feel really gives it the big climax feel. It's also focused much more on the drama and supernatural compared to before, which makes sense given this is a climax and what everything is building to. And this part has some incredible moments. There's one surprise where I was thinking all along that the show's not going to go this direction, and then all of a sudden, they did. And I loved it. 
I also really love to look at Ricky here when things were building up, just seeing, trying to figure out how to do his best for those he cared about, but also being completely overwhelmed and not knowing what to do. Episode 6 specifically was so incredible. Well, 4 and 5 building up to it too, but 6, it made me feel things I don't know how to put into words. There is wonder and sorrow and fear and determination and despair all wrapped up into one. And we could feel Ricky feeling all of them. So much has changed since the fun, innocent times in season one. But that's life. We all have those moments we wish could last forever. But they don't. Friendships fade. Life happens. People we talk to every day drift apart. We wake up from the dream. And that's what this season is about. And I'll be honest, as I write this review, I haven't seen past episode 6 of Refrain. And this is true as I'm narrating the review too. So I don't know what will happen. I don't know if the characters will get their happy ending. I don't know the secret of the world. And I don't know if it'll make sense or be good or whatever, but that's life. And regardless of if the show ends up being good or bad or whatever, the feelings it left me with are one of a kind. And that's what I wanted to tell you. This show is special. Powerful. Magical, even. It takes a look at life in a familiar yet unique way. And that really stands out. Now, my script is out of words. I'm just rambling at this point. And no, I did not write that I would be rambling into the script. I'm just actually rambling. So I'm going to pause the review for now and finish the show and come back in a couple days to finish the review. I'm looking forward to it, but also a little bit scared. It'll be a time. Definitely a time. So I will talk to you after this short break. Well, that was an ending. Definitely an ending. The anime did end. That is a true statement and not a false one. But how do I feel about it? I feel many things. First of all, the episodes building up to the big climax... They were fantastic. Probably the best in the whole series, and there are a lot of really good episodes there to compare them to. There are so many different stories all coming together here. You have the mysteries, the character motivations, the past, and just the characters growing, too. Some of the characters finally revealed their secrets, and it brought so much together, and it made things make sense in a way that they hadn't before. I think one of my favorite things about the big climax here is how it makes the early episodes better in context. The first season of this show is mostly a slice of life, no big stakes or excitement most of the time, and not super interesting. But when the story came together here, it made these ordinary days more important. If you are familiar with Fate Khalid Prisma Ilya, something similar happened there, where the start was more lighthearted and fun, but then things got more dark and serious, and the dark and serious parts made the beginning stronger with them tying together. Little Besters did something very similar here, and even some of my complaints about the first season kind of were addressed with the ending, and I no longer feel that way. The baseball parts were really fantastic too. Little Busters is not a sports anime but Refrain really takes advantage of the baseball aspect to have a lot of conflict around. And of course, the constant idea throughout the series is the desire to have fun times last forever, and this is at the forefront of that big climax as well. And then they had the moment the whole series was building to. Every seemingly insignificant scene came together here. These characters we'd spent 37 episodes with would never be the same. The dream was ending. And that was nothing short of incredible. We all have those moments we wish could last forever. But they don't. They become memories. Dreams of a fantastical past. And we wake up from the dream. But life doesn't end with a dream. In fact, it's just the opposite. That's when life begins. And it may be a scary life. Filled with uncertainty and pain and confusion and fear. But also possibility. And while a happy ending may be uncertain, so too is a tragic ending. And it is the love we felt in the past that gives us the strength to search for this happy ending. And that's what the grand finale of Little Besters is all about. Except it sort of all fell apart here. 
Which sucks because the show is so good. I just talked about it. A first season filled with fun, slice of light, some drama, some mysteries thrown in. And then a second season that cranked up the drama, went all out with the mysteries until they brought it all together with the characters and mysteries all woven together in a jaw-dropping way and setting everything up to end on the perfect emotional note. That is how anime should be. And that is one of the best examples of awesome anime storytelling I've ever seen. But the story didn't end there. No, there were two episodes left. Now, a couple more episodes is fine. In fact, after a climax like that, you kind of need some time to see what the characters will do next. How will their lives go on? That's fine. That would be great. But instead, the show went in a direction that seemed to sort of invalidate everything that it was building up to. From a narrative perspective, it sort of works the way that they did what they did. If you, like, hand away some supernatural aspects, which that's fine, I guess. But it's the message that felt like it was ruined. The message of the show is about the moments that we wish could last forever. That's why I kept going back to that refrain, pun intended. But it felt like the ending ignored this idea. It's like if you're playing a game all about choices mattering, but then you find out in the end none of your choices matter. That just feels bad. Or you're watching an anime all about mystery and mind games, but in the end it's resolved with flashy action and supernatural elements that were never explained. Yes, I am still mad about that one. Anyway, back to this one. Is Little Bester something I recommend? You know, yeah, it is. Season 1 was solid, both as a slice of life and like set up for season 2. And most of season 2 was fantastic. And while the ending fell short of what I wanted, it still kind of worked. And yes, I do feel like the ideas and the message just like didn't work. It sort of could if you twist it to fit in a less satisfying way. But the ending really did bring it down from something amazing to something only good. Which does make me sad. So close to greatness. And it feels weird that my first review in like a year is for a show that's just good. Like, I've seen other good shows too that are worthy reviews. Like, Spy X Family was good. Hentai Prince and the Stony Cat was good. Kimono Jihan was good. Pet was good. And weird. Very weird. But good. I think. Not completely sure. That one deserves more thought. Then there's Somali and the Forest Spirit, which just, oh, that one was good. Yeah, there's a lot of good anime out there. Little Busters among them. So tell me your thoughts on Little Busters, of the ending especially. I'm curious. Or if you played the visual novel, let me know what you think of that. I thought about like playing through it too, because after like seeing it, I'm curious how they go into more depth there and with all the different routes and everything. That could be interesting to do. Maybe I'll just, uh, stream that. Or tell me what other anime I should check out. I've been trying to go through a lot of the classics, or at least shows that I've wanted to see for a long time but haven't. And there's a lot of great shows out there, so that's been fun. Anyway, thank you for watching. I will be back at some point with something. Check out the links in the description, and I will see you all next time.